introduce Olaf Shetler. He's um, presenting about implementing flexible pay payouts with Drupal. And that's the last talk, sadly, for today. So have fun and enjoy. And it, it won't last two hours, definitely not. So <laughs> don't expect me to bore you this long. Um, well, basically, um, just I think I should just start um, well with this agenda. Um, I, I tell you a bit about uh, me and uh, why I'm actually here. I'm definitely not one of the core team, so everything you uh, listened to this this morning and maybe even um, yesterday was uh, from this uh, um, group of uh, divine people that actually do. Drupal 6. I'm one of the uh, poor consumers who's still implementing on Drupal 5, but uh, um, I've tried to sort of set up my, um, my little demonstration on, on Drupal 6 and failed. So at one point or the other, I'm actually asking for, uh, for help on porting stuff to Drupal 6, and maybe I find somebody here. Um, actually, so you probably know everything about Drupal, so I skip rather quickly about, uh, uh, on over that one. Then a brief introduction in theming, uh, into theming, and actually the, the gist of, of what I'm talking about is um, how to use Drupal for rather flexible layouts. Um, the background for this talk really is, is the project uh, we're currently doing, and um, well, it went through uh, one or two um, evolutionary um, steps, but um, I'm presenting my, my current thinking here, so, but, um, so that everybody can get up to speed, I'm presenting Drupal theming um, before actually diving into the very details. Um, so why I'm doing a Drupal project is basically I earn my, uh, um, yeah, my, my living with it, not just doing Drupal projects, but it's one of the CMSs that, that we use as Conter. And um, yeah, Drupal has always been fun and uh, Hopefully, with Drupal 6, it's, it's going to be even more fun. So I'm looking forward to um, actually port the little modules that I've contributed to the project to uh, Drupal 6, and I'm um, looking forward to um, doing productive projects with it, which currently I don't do, actually, because, well, it's a bit far off trying to, keep to uh, stay up to speed. And actually, um, the very kind lecture of this, this book, um, me and... Uh, uh, Friedrich Stahl are currently writing and which is already complete for Drupal 5 now needs a little update to actually get up to speed with Drupal 6 to uh, be worth worth it once you want to buy it. Okay, so Drupal. You Is anybody here who doesn't know the architecture of Drupal? Ah, nobody. Ah, the, the guy there. So I'm, I'm uh, allowed to just give you a brief over overview of, of Drupal. Um, Drupal, just to put theming into perspective, um, Drupal is, as you all know, except, uh, hello you, um, is as a core with um, contributed modules on top of it. Both of them uh, communicate the core um, with the modules and the modules of the core through um, well-defined APIs, the, the hooks, as they are called in Drupal speak, and um, using core services and using the modules is the theme system, which is um, basically just um, directories in a certain file structure where you have all your uh, markup files. And um, well, there are several contributed um, themes um, when you download Drupal, but you can also, of course, um, write your own, own themes. And that is the way you actually um, create your Drupal site. You start, um, well, depends on how you um, commence building your site, either come from the design side, then you will probably start with a, a Photoshop file and then make markup from it, and then um, you start on the theme side, or you start from maybe existing content, migrate that to Drupal, and then see that it gets uh, properly displayed through a, the a theme. Either way, you have to develop a theme um, at one point in your project, and um, yeah, Drupal theming is a very clever concept, um, especially when you look at other content management systems which uh, yeah, don't have that, basically. Um, when you look at um, commercial content management systems, um, you have this distinction between um, design and, and content, but you hardly ever have a distinction between um, design, functionality, and content. So this uh, three-folded space is, is uh, 
hardly ever there. And Drupal does a very nice job in separating um, the content that you manage somewhere, the functionality that Drupal has an awful lot of, um, plus the, the actual design. Um, and it, it has this uh, distinction in three different layers, really, which makes it a very nice system, not just for um, building websites with it, but for, for using it for, for all kinds of things. Um, people have asked me for um, maintaining um, their mergers and acquisitions, for example, in Drupal by, by using the content construction kit as a modeling layer. And uh, so Drupal is, is used for quite a lot of um, applications that not directly come to mind when you look at a content management system. Um, if you want to look at Drupal sites, you all probably know these two URLs. Um, and um, they, they give, a sh give showcases of, um, of very nice and unexpectedly being Drupal sites. So it's, it's w very well worth looking at these uh, URLs to get ideas what can be done in theming uh, in Drupal um, for sites that should not immediately um, look like Drupal sites. So really, what, what is a theme in Drupal? Um, when you install the software, you um, yeah, when you poke around a bit, you uh, probably in the administrative interface very quickly, uh, very quickly um, find the place where you can fiddle around with uh, themes and actually um, select a different theme, um, adjust settings in the theme, and um, you very quickly, uh, maybe even before you have your first Drupal installation, um, look at the uh, theme galleries that are there on, on the Drupal project site. Um, Maybe I managed to switch to um, my local installation here. Uh, sadly, it's a bit dif difficult to edit this. Let's see. If I, ah. um, I have a local installation here, which I just briefly want to show. Um, let's see if I can uh, show you the places where you actually maintain your, your theme. So this is just a vanilla Drupal 5 installation and under um, administer um, themes you have the... Oh, I, I have to move that over again. <laughs> I was so happy that I can immediately see my cursor here. Um, this one? No. Uh, except it doesn't, okay. Well, <laughs> okay, let's, so this is um, the way Drupal presents itself once you have um, it installed. Drupal installation, as you all know, is, is maybe less than a minute um, to, to download it's the archive, install, run through the uh, web-based installer and, and have a default installation. And once you have it, you um, can play around with uh, selecting a different theme like uh, this, this very old one, for example, um, which still is a table-based uh, theme. Um, so I have an administrative theme enabled here. This won't show up immediately, so there it is. Um, so this is the, um, the, the old uh, 4.7 theme. I go back to the garland again. So this is the way you um, switch between themes and um, when you're not content with what Drupal have or your, your customer actually wants a site that looks slightly different than the uh, plain vanilla um, Drupal site, you go to um, project, ah, so difficult here. Um, either of these galleries and um, maybe even select your Drupal version to have that have only compatible uh, themes displayed. And well, there you can probably find a good starting point for your own um, project. Once you have decided on which theme to use and um, have installed that in your, in your site, um, there's another very good starting point. I'll show you another one. Ah, <laughs> very difficult here. Uh, a theme that is well worth looking at when once you've decided to uh, go to, uh, to to develop under 
Drupal 6, which is very flexible in terms of what uh, areas it has and what um, configuration options you, you want. Um, once you have that theme in your site, uh, there is various things that you, that you can do in, um, in the site as an administrator as well as a visitor. So you, have, um, you can have a central uh, theme in your site um, that you enable for all users to see or you can even have visitors uh, individually choose um, themes that they want to enable. I've never seen that on a site happen, but um, that's an option too. Um, within a theme, I go back to this administrative interface. Um, there are certain options that without um, coding anything you can, um, can set up and, and configure. Let's have another look at this, this interface. So once you, you have your theme and uh, want to configure it, there are certain options on this administrative page. Um, the, the Garland theme has this uh, gizmo here that you can even adjust the colors for it. Um, you, you will hardly ever want that in a productive project uh, that users can fiddle around with that, but maybe that's for, for toying around and demonstrating that Drupal is, is good use for, for being flexible as it is. Um, then there are certain options where you can switch on and off uh, certain features of themes. You can even, um, well, you can upload a different logo, different uh, path icon, um, various other settings that um, are on, on this page and configurable without programming. So nothing fancy here and nothing definitely, or maybe it's something you, you need when developing, initially developing your site, but um, I think once the site is, is set up, um, these settings will be there and, and not changed anymore. Um, still, when you're not um, wanting to write code, a, a thing to um, modify is, is at actually then once you have your theme selected, um, placing blocks on a site. And just to uh, briefly show you where that is, um, site building blocks, that's the uh, standard way of placing contents in the marginal areas of a site. For each of the themes there's a different uh, set of blocks that you can place on a site and um, have this, this interface here where you uh, can actually place your blocks um, in the site. Um, this is for a very simple site where there's not much change in, in different sections and um, different, um, different sub areas of a site where you can have blocks. Um, each of these blocks may have um, may have a URL um, path which um, allows it to appear or not appear in certain URL areas on a site, which, um, okay, when you have very many areas on a site, it's rather difficult to uh, um, put, or it's, it's rather tedious really to put um, paths here. Um, and uh, something like that, that you have um, certain sections on the site and, and place all the, the patterns here. Um, there have, however, been projects that use this mechanism. Um, one prominent one is the, um, the New York Observer. Um, th there is a nice explanation of, of how they've actually gone about um, using blocks on a, on a very flexible layout and using this exact mechanism for um, controlling the, the switching of on and off um, of, of blocks on a site. I'll have the URL in a, in a second. Okay, so this is briefly how you configure, how you set up your themes, uh, configure them, and um, well, what does a theme actually do? I, I mentioned before that um, this is rather unique in Drupal that you have a separation not only between content and, and design, but um, Drupal has a lot of functionality um, in core and in contributed modules that goes far beyond just the plain management of content. And so it's a good thing to have a separation between design and function as well. Um, and this is what this uh, theming me mechanism is particularly good at. Um, it works by um, actually outputting everything that, that the module or the core outputs uh, through a level of indirection through this uh, theme function. So any anytime a core module or a contributed module or even your own code um, does some output, it uh, 
doesn't do that directly, but, it ra but rather it calls a, a theme function, which has as a parameter the uh, type of thing that you want to output, and um, the core theming mechanism then has a certain um, number of, of um, yeah, places to look at where to actually find the output for, for this particular thing. So, for example, if you want to uh, have different designs or want to override the, the standard page design of a Drupal site, you uh, would write a, an override to the theme page function and put your um, markup in that particular function. So this is the way that, that one of the very o the, the oldest uh, themes that, that is um, delivered with Drupal actually works. The, the chameleon uh, theme is actually a set of such functions that uh, override the um, theming, theming functions and provide a new PHP functions and directly within the code um, put the markup for, for this particular implementation. So if you choose the, the chameleon um, theme in your site, you get a new set of output functions that um, yeah, outputs the, the chameleon design. Um, this is good for, for maximum speed because you, have to, you directly have um, the, the markup in, um, in, the, in the PHP and don't have to look at different places. But obviously, when you have designers and programmers and the core system um, being different persons, it's not, not really the way to go. Um, so this is, if you have just an override of these functions, um, you still have the output in, um, in code. So uh, this is hard for designers to uh, maintain and it's just not a good thing to, to have. So this is where um, theming engines come into, into play. Um, there is in Drupal actually just one theming engine. There used to be another one, X template, but this has gone a bit to the side. The, the one standard uh, theming engine now is uh, PHP template, which basically is supports as a templating engine just plain PHP code. So everything you do in your uh, template is just PHP. So you can have um, content pushed into that template by means of variables that, that get set um, in these template files page or for nodes or for blocks or any other template files that you design or you can pull content into the, uh, the template files so you have both uh, mechanisms the push of variables from the engine to the template as well as you can invoke normal um, services um, like uh, for example menu um, formatting or external services from your template because it's just plain PHP and that's a great advantage for uh, using PHP as a templating system. Um, themes themselves, um, well, they, that's what they do. They, they provide functions, uh, they provide files like these and actually override them. The core set is the one that I've listed, page, note, block, and comment, but you can have, for each and everything in Drupal, you can have your own um, override function and uh, coming with that also override files. So your theme is a directory um, with lots of these tuple PHP files. Um, so this is, to summarize, the, the kinds of themes that you have in Drupal. There is um, the ones that I've mentioned here, the plain PHP themes, which just provide override functions like chameleon underscore page directly to output uh, the, the markup. This is best for raw performance, but always, I don't think it's a good choice because it's so bad and tedious to or badly to maintain. The standard way to do theming is through an engine, uh, the PHP tem template engine being the, the standard that is uh, distributed with Drupal. And there is uh, some themes that come with the, uh, the system. The, the standard in uh, Drupal 5 is, is Garland. Um, there is this blue marine, which is an old, older one, which also works with the PHP template engine. And there is new themes uh, coming up for Drupal 6, which, which are also based on the, uh, the PHP template engine. There's also an even simpler mechanism for, for creating themes. You can have one of the um, base themes and just in a subdirectory provide a style sheet, style.css, and just override the style sheet of the, uh, of the core of, of the base theme. And just for providing another style sheet, you can create another theme that you can select in the admin interface. Um, there's another, well, thing, a little pet project of mine 
that uh, I wanted to sort of bring up here is that it's not only an, um, possible to have just one theming engine, the PHP template engine, but um, you couldn't have other templating engines in, in PHP. There is definitely Smarty, which I always have a hard time to understand why we need this templating engine. Um, and there is definitely, um, well, PHP tar, which is another templating engine, which has um, certain advantages. Uh, so PHP tile may be a good choice when you um, work closely together with designers, but you are not the designer yourself. So there is somebody else who is actually um, creating the, the markup, and you are the one to um, integrate the markup with the, the Drupal dynamic content. And PHP tile may be a good choice for that because um, it, well, it, it, helps t it helps in two respects. It first, I to my understanding, it's much less clutter in, in, in the language because it's, uh, well, PHP has these uh, annoyances of all these dollar signs and strange things in the code and um, PHP tile is, is plain XHTML. So um, these template files are editable with Dreamweaver, if you may, or uh, whatever other tool you have and they validate. So it's easier to maintain a, a validating um, markup file working on the same markup file as your, your designer that actually does create the markup. So you can have the designers work on these files and at the same time you, um, by just adding the, the attributes um, to the file, um, add the dynamic aspects to it. This PHTP tal is, is a port from, from a SOAP um, templating language. Um, I, I don't, well, I haven't done um, benchmarks on that, so I shouldn't say that, but uh, it, it compiles these language, these language templates files to PHP again, so, uh, well, you need to measure that, of course, but I don't think it's a bad, it's, it's a very big performance hit. On medium size, it's probably very well worth the uh, consideration because it has this advantage on the one side, and maybe even a bigger advantage is that you can have example content in the dynamic template file, so you have, can have that all your lorem ipsum um, text within the uh, dynamic template files and um, you can work on the same file. You have the designer creating the complete example um, file and you take the same file, have it in a subversion or CVS repository and then add the dynamis, dynamic aspect to it. And um, well, yeah, I think it's at least worth considering when you're doing a uh, productive project um, on, on Drupal using this template engine. And um, this is maybe the call for help. Um, I haven't managed actually to um, port this PHP tile um, templating theming engine to Drupal 6 for, maybe I just don't understand what's, what's going on in the new theme.ink file, but um, I, I would like to, um, because I think it's, it's such a good thing to have at least, um, well, PHP tile and probably other theming languages have the same problem. So if, if somebody's, uh, uh, more fluent than I am with the theme.ink file, I'd, I'd, uh, I need a helping hand for porting that. The, the uh, PHP template engine is just um, 20 lines of code, but that's probably because it's the default, la default language, so it's, it's even easier in Drupal 6 than it was in Drupal 5 to create a, uh, a theming engine, and I'd, I really would like to port the, the tile language to Drupal, but uh, I failed, at least at my first attempt, so maybe there's somebody else who can give a hand on that one. Um, anyway, with, uh, with my examples, I, I stick with the uh, standard language so that even if you want to start with Drupal 6 and um, even would like to uh, use PHP tile but it's still not there, you can um, follow my examples. So um, I have created a little demo site where I wanted to go through several aspects of, of creating a theme. And the first thing to understand is where a theme actually lives. And Drupal, as in many cases, it's rather flexible in, in finding your themes. Um, there is first the, um, always starting from, from the um, setup from the um, installation directory, there's the, the core themes that live in the subdirectory themes. Then there is the uh, profile directories where you can have um, different applications bundled with Drupal. But this is probably not very often used. And the um, usual case is to have your theme in either of these directories. Um, I tend to to use the all, dot, uh, all slash themes 
um, directory hierarchy for uh, placing my themes. That's the place where you put themes that are um, available across all your uh, multi-site um, multi domains. You can always also have uh, themes that are just specific for a certain um, for a certain multi-site site, or you can have um, a theme that is available for all sites except the few that you have um, explicitly mentioned. But all themes is probably a good place to, to put your themes. What is a theme then in detail once you have created or decided on the, the, plate, the place to put it? Um, a theme comprises of a um, few things. In uh, Drupal 5 it was just, well, the directory of course, and then a single um, page.tipple.php file. In Drupal 6 um, themes also have info files as you already know them from, from modules in Drupal 5. So in um, Drupal 6 you uh, also have to, have to create um, an info file in the theme directory and once you have that um, the theme is uh, selectable in the administrative interface. In Drupal 5, which I will use here, it's the page.tipple.php file that actually tells Drupal that there is first that there is a theme and then that it is to be using the, um, the PHP template engine. Um, you mean the, the variables that are pushed into the template file? Yeah, the variables you mentioned here, if they have changed between 5 and 6. Yeah. Um, well, I, I didn't dare to actually list them here because you wouldn't no, be able no. to read them, but um, these are the places um, where you, ha you could look at. That there is, I think there are two or three variables um, that are added um, in the theme. I may or may not find the place. There is a, there is a page on Drupal Org that lists um, porting modules so uh, look for porting modules from 5 to 6. There's also the uh, changes for, for the theming system. But this is the uh, places where you want to look for the actual list for them. Uh, I think there are some additions. There are not, uh, there are not uh, any omissions to the set of variables. And there's a language uh, variable that is an object now, not, not um, just a string as it was before. And I don't recall any, anything else, but that's probably a prominent one. Um, so, our own theme that I want to um, show you is con consists of, well, my first attempts to do it in Drupal f uh, 6 uh, added this info file, but then basically it's just a page, a typical PHP file, a style sheet, and some magic in, in uh, the template file, in the, the, the PHP file that we will have a look at in, in a minute. Um, first thing that I wanted to show you was a small, well, experiment in, in a theme that, well, it's not my own invention, it's probably a very popular uh, thing to have just to um, show how to manipulate a theme. And let's have a look at, at the theme, the example theme that I have and, and some of the code that, that I needed to actually make this happen to place a horizontal user block on, on, top, of the, uh, on top of the layout. So let me see if I manage to uh, switch on the browser here. First thing is um, to actually select the theme. The very first thing when you start uh, developing themes is probably to you want um, the administrative um, site to still work. Um, so you, you'd rather select an administrative theme here and not use the default. So once you mess up your, your theme, you'll, you'll still have something to, um, uh, an interface to switch back once you've uh, yeah, you, you don't have any content anymore um, on your site. So I've activated an administrative theme here in the interface and then I go, I can just activate my little example site here, uh, which for some reason is called Froscon. It's enabled already, I make it the default. And save it. So it's it's kindly reminds you that you still have the administrative theme um, displayed and, and won't see your own theme before going to the front page of your site. And um, ah, well, I'm not much of a designer, so don't look, look at the actual design, but it's just for demonstration purposes. Um, so this is how it finally will look like. Um, it has a top level menu here. Um, and here is actually the, 
um, the block that I would just want to show you now, um, how to actually do place that here. It looks horrible in that resolution. Well, um, so let's try to find a terminal. Even more difficult than I thought. Um, so make it a bit bigger. That big. Right, this way, my, my suit. Uh, with no cursor. So. Um, okay, so this is the place I put my theme, um, the directory, Froscon, and here are the files in there, which I promised. So the very first thing to do is to get a, a basic markup from somewhere. So well, really with, with modern CSS uh, style sheet based layout, that may be that much of a problem um, because, well, it's, there's not much in it really, so you may even ask whether it's, it's worth looking at different um, theming engines because there's really so little um, consideration in, in that basic markup file. It's just um, what I've done is I um, copied a basic, um, basic um, HTML layout um, to this directory and, and uh, added um, all the variables in there. You can also start from the standard um, page.tipple.php in the, the engines uh, directory and, and go from there. Or you can uh, use either of the uh, public or open source um, layout um, directories on the, on the web and start from one of these layouts. So um, what is really in there in this page file is just standard um, stuff in the header, some variables here that Drupal will exp uh, will um, We'll put in here, and then there's the banner area, a container with uh, some levels here for doing the cent center central layout, and um, stuff here for the content area, and then the footer. So this is pretty much all of the standard themes that you nowadays come across, which more or less look like, like this layout because it's just the outer frame and you just decide with whether you want a, central, uh, a centered layout or a left or right, whatever, um, um, bound theme and um, this is the markup for that. Um, the actual, um, how you go about to actually um, move the, the lock-in block from, from where it's usually um, is here to um, up there is by creating an override um, of the of the um, of the the block from there. Um, the first thing you have to do is to actually uh, let's log in here again. Is to move the block to a different region, the the login block. So I I just show you there how this is done. You go to the block area and then. Um, the user login and navigation blocks are no longer in the left area where they used to be, but rather they are now in the header region for, um, yeah, for placing them up there. Um, there's a little problem here that um, the navigation also has to be there for logged in users, so I had to um, separate the, um, all the nitty gritty administrative uh, menu entries um, into a separate menu here and put them in a different um, blocks so that they don't, well, be because maybe they wouldn't fit in here. For a locked in user, you just want very few entries here. So I created a new menu here, which has all the administrative entries um, still on the left side. I just wanted to have the user related stuff um, up here. So this is why there's another menu in the left side, but which has all the menu entries um, from the navigation menu um, that I, I wouldn't need. So this is the first step that you do. Um, then the next step is to actually uh, create a style sheet that um, does the horizontal uh, layout. And this is done by just adding um, things here in the, um, in, in the style.css. Um, you might wonder why I have PHP constructs in here. This is a little trick. 
uh, that I use for, well, not for having centralized information or for, for colors and stuff. Um, I make the style.css file a um, PHP file by just forcing the type to um, PHP in, in this htaccess file so that I can use um, PHP constructs in the style sheet. So that helps me um, add all the colors at the top and then use the variables at different places in, in the style sheet here. Um, so and then let's look at the uh, the user stuff for this actually for this block. Um, this is how well this is just ordinary um, style sheet magic. You there are some uh, headers that I just hide, and then there is just little. Um, uh, is it not? Why is that? Because it's already uh, hidden in the standard style. Ah. No, I didn't know that. Huh. All right. <coughs> so what you put there, none? The uh, in the block configuration, you can enter the head, uh, header. Ah, yeah, you I know. Modify, uh, yeah. Of the yeah. Here, none, it disappears. Ah, okay. So you wouldn't even need that one, yeah? Um, so the real thing is to um, display everything nicely in line and some more things to make it not look that ugly. And um, so this is basically the styling. You can imagine how, how this is made horizontally. And um, the last thing is um, to get rid of the description fields that are uh, in the usual user login um, block. And um, you can, of course, just hide them as I've done here. Or there's another way of um, manipulating these forms that I wanted to show you is by creating little um, little form override template functions. And this one is a typical um, template function. So the template PHP file in a theme is the place to um, place these um, template override functions. Um, a suggestion for uh, naming them, you could either use the, uh, name them as frostcon underscore user underscore login, or if you want to share the code between different uh, themes, you can also use the, uh, the name of the, the theming engine for, for these override, theme override functions. And um, this is the way I um, got rid of the descriptions. I basically, in, I created, actually I looked into in the user module, found out how this, um, um, this form was called, and all forms actually call theming functions as well for doing their output. And um, this theme function gets the whole form, um, um, er every definition. So I just uh, did a var dump on uh, what actually uh, comes out of or what gets passed to this function. And then you just find the description pieces and set them to, um, well to, to the empty string. And then the last thing that will probably um, appear often when you don't want the override functions, but you rather want an override um, file, a, a tuple.php file, you have to, in Drupal 5, call the um, PHP template underscore callback with the name of the template file and the, the parameters that you want to pass that. And um, the actual function that plays this form then is um, in the user um, dash login dot uh, tuple.php file, which uh, well, actually just renders the form in this case. Uh, there it is. So this is a one-liner that actually renders the form from the, the definition. So this is maybe not a typical file, a typical case for um, a markup file, but in this case it's just rendering the, the form from the um, data structure that defines it. In Drupal 6, the um, definition of these um, template files is even easier. Let me see if I find that. Um, yeah. I have a Drupal 6 installation here. Uh, Signs or um, There, you just declare these um, these 
files, you have this <coughs> new theme hook where you actually declare um, overwrite, overwriting uh, files that you want to have and, and you don't have to call these this underscore callback functions as you have to uh, do in Drupal 5. So that gets even easier in Drupal 6 to have these files. Um, all right, so this was this little example on um, how to actually place the, uh, do several things, actually work with a block placement, do some magic in the style sheet, and then use the theme override function is in this particular case for, um, for a form theme function. Um, and this is a very nice thing in Drupal. You can really manipulate um, even the, the forms that the system used by means of uh, theme override functions. So you just have to get a hold of the, the form ID um, to mani manipulate the uh, forms in theme override functions. Let's see. So this was just a small experiment to get a feel for how these uh, themes work. Let's turn back to, to flexible layouts, really. Um, how do you do that? When you have a site and you want a single, you have a single page layout for the front page and um, maybe you have sections in your site, sports, science, whatever, uh, that should look slightly different. Um, either have just different color codes or have completely different layout. Um, the way, the, the built-in way in Drupal is that you have, that the, the theme engine already checks different locations for the uh, tipple.php files. So um, whenever you have a theme override that calls for the page um, that is to be displayed, it also, um, for this URL, for example, when you want to display a particular node, it checks these places for, for template files. So you can imagine, um, you can have, and you probably want uh, some include files somewhere else and then have uh, the, the distinction between the different cases in either of these um, files. So when you, so it starts with the most uh, specific one and then works its way down to um, the most general one without uh, taking the numerals uh, to the next level. So the one is dropped at some place. Um, there's a certain uh, specific um, place for, for um, the, the front page which uh, may get formatted differently in, uh, in this page front tipple.php. Um, so this is nice for the, the internal URLs, but uh, you usually have your sections distinguished by um, path alias aliases. Uh, for example, you want the topic, sports, football, whatever, and you want these um, external ali aliases um, paths to, to determine your, um, your, your theming, and unfortunately, this mechanism uses um, the internal URLs, the unaliased ones. And so to um, make this happen for um, this example about history early, and you want really this URL to determine your, um, your, your uh, theme files, you have to put this or something like this uh, into your template uh, PHP file to, to actually um, take into account the, the alias um, pathes. And so, well, this just gets the alias um, path from the uh, internal system URL and then adds suggestive um, templates to for the theme engine. So this is actually a central place to add variables to, um, to your templates, this uh, underscore variables um, yeah, hook. This, so this is basically the way you would go ahead if you have sections and each sec section uh, wants a different <coughs> layout and you're content with uh, putting everything in, um, in the, the um, file system, in the, the page um, files. Um, we have a current project which uh, is a bit more demanding, um, which actually has, um, yeah, not just different sections, but each section looks different uh, in the content area. So it has different blocks uh, in the content area and um, the, um, the editorial team wants to influence the, the layout on a case-by-case -case basis. So they didn't want to um, code PHP files for each of their layouts, but rather want to have somehow 
uh, access to, to the layout through the uh, user interface. And there's, well, there's this approach uh, that I just briefly um, addressed by using these blocks and having lots and lots of these um, regular expressions um, for blocks where you determine on which page which block displays, which is certainly a viable uh, approach especially if your theme has uh, more than the standard regions, the header, the left and the right uh, sidebar, and maybe the content area. But if the content area is, um, contains more regions that you have more flexibility for placing your blocks, that is certainly a viable um, way to do it. And if you add some, some custom code um, that actually um, enters the, the regular expressions for the blocks, um, um, Data on a in a data-driven way, that that is probably a good way for for setting up a site. Um, but there is a different approach which I uh, fancy even more. And um, well, I had uh, maybe f before that I uh, I explained how I, I thought this this uh, this problem could be solved. I uh, set off to uh, use the CCK for solving that. Um, you may be aware that the CC content construction kit is rather flexible. Um, in, well, as a modeling layer. So you can have arbitrarily, um, well, not arbitrarily complex, but complex enough type definitions for your content. And I thought of abusing um, this system for storing my page layout. So I wanted to um, define a, a content type page and a content type block, have them linked together with node references, and um, by that means actually store my um, my layout in, in the content database, have them versioned and um, have uh, this way have editors give, give ed editor access to, to the dynamic content. Um, this would certainly have been viable. Um, I would have had content um, object pages, have blocks in that and within the blocks would have placed views and by that would, would have been able to um, place lists of, of content in, um, in these blocks. But there is an even more elegant um, way to do that and um, well um, yeah you should definitely have a look at um, this sort of ingenious module which uh, gives the utmost possible flexibility in, in uh, defining layers and even gives that possibility to your uh, administrative and editing team that is this this panel modules by Earl Miles who has actually also done the views uh, module uh, should I click on that URL? Well, you can do it yourself. It's just project panels and uh, it's, a, it's going through the second version now. You probably want to look at the uh, alpha 8 of the uh, second version of the panels modules and this is what I've installed here. Um, the panels module actually has three ver variants of um, content. You can have pages, you can have um, paneled nodes and you can have this is new in this uh, latest alpha version mini panels which are bound to replace the blocks completely. So, um, I, but I will only look at pages here in my, my example. Um, the, the, the downside of the panels module is that it it's does not work for Drupal 6 yet. So what it, I think it's, it's bound to be ported quickly. So it's definitely worth a look at. Um, so for a site like um, Side that that might want to to use that module um, for a site like like this, where you have which is basically an online magazine which has lots of uh, resource and uh, a very hierarchical structure, but content is supposed to be reused and at different places. Um, so there is um, well, sports articles are are here and are on the front page as well. Um, there is a need for a very flexible mechanism for um, laying out this, this middle column here. Um, well, this current release is really handcrafted, um, as, as they've told me. So this every, um, every area, every section looks completely different here. But they want to retain um, this flexibility um, even in the future. And uh, so that the big question is how to do that in Drupal. Um, how to have this, this central area um, flexibly lay out, laid out. And um, <coughs> the idea is now to use this panels module for, um, for
for giving that flexibility to the, the editing team. And I'll briefly show you what, what is needed for, for actually achieving that. Um, so the one thing that you need is, uh, is a flexible layout, a flexible way of doing layouts, but there's more for such a complex site. It, um, the way the, the editors work there is that they have resource um, topic areas where people write articles, and there's a well rather deep hierarchy of, of resource uh, of, of topics that they want um, to influence the um, as a navigation point. So there's some um, necessity for actually um, combining the, the topics with the navigation. And um, typically, deep topical hierarchies in Drupal you do with taxonomy module. And there's, um, as you might be aware, there's this uh, taxonomy menu module that actually um, joins the, the taxonomy with the menu and actually creates menu entries for, um, for, for taxonomy terms. But um, it's, well, it, the uh, taxonomy menu uh, module is rather, well, it's, it works quite nicely, but it is sort of a hack because it has to um, work around well, a non-feature in Drupal 5, which I asked before, uh, is now in Drupal 6, where you can actually um, enter the, the hierarchy um, of your menu terms explicitly. In Drupal 5, um, there's, there's a need for, for a little kernel patch um, in this menu find parents function um, that actually allows you to do that, to explicitly um, put the hierarchy of your um, menu entries um, well, explicitly enter that in, into the, uh, the menu. Um, so the taxonomy menu doesn't rely on, on any patch of the core. It rather um, creates this hierarchy of terms in the URLs. So um, it creates URLs of the form taxonomy underscore menu slash uh, three for the vocabulary slash one slash two slash three for the uh, levels of hierarchy in your taxonomy. That's the way it, it works for Drupal 5 without um, expecting a patch to, to the core file. Um, but I wanted to combine the um, taxonomy plus menu plus the panel modules and wanted to uh, have the, the taxonomy term um, being, being usable as a parameter for the views I wanted to embed in the, the panel. So I wanted to have URLs of uh, slash topic slash one to three for just the, the, um, the leave term in the taxonomy hierarchy. So um, I applied these... Uh, little patch that I found um, somewhere on Drupal org um, to menu ink so I was able to explicitly um, explicitly enter hierarchy into the menu system and uh, rewrote the um, well the, the taxonomy menu module to then give me this kind of URL slash topic slash one two three for um, just the the um, leave term um, the second thing that the taxonomy menu module does is it actually provides a, um, a page callback. So it, it also does the page layout for you, which is well basically a good idea when you just want to have your, um, your, your content listed for this particular um, taxonomy term. But I wanted to show a, um, a panel page in, instead of this listing. So I had to get rid of this, um, of this page callback and and rather have the uh, panel module do the displaying of the page so that um, the panel uh, module does show the panel and provides the uh, taxonomy term as a parameter to the embedded views. And, um, well, this is really what, what sort of gave me the raw material for coding my own module for doing that. So I, I used the, the idea from the taxonomy menu. I used the um, association of of a of a term of a taxonomy term with with a piece of content in this case it's not the node it's a, a panel page and I had to rely on this uh, core hack to mon menu ink for uh, being able to explicitly enter hierarchy into um, into the menu um, then there's little goodies for um, actually maintaining deep hierarchies which is, is a bit tedious in the standard um, way that Drupal does it in the user interface. And, uh, well, the result really is, when you look at, um, not this side yet, unfortunately, but 
my ugly <laughs> uh, mock-up here, um, is that I have mm, that I have a hierarchy of, of taxonomy terms in this um, vocabulary here. Uh, I just copied the the Froscon uh, hierarchy. So these are my my topics that I want to show on the side, and um, I have a little module that allows me to. Uh, well, that basically took all the ideas from taxonomy menu, um, taxonomy ASOC, and uh, plus this uh, core patch that was needed and um, some additional configuration options. Um, where is it? Here. And there's a little setup for that. Uh, I call it, give it some name. And well, you choose your, this is really what configures the uh, association of taxonomy terms with menu entries. Uh, you choose the vocabulary, you choose the top level term. The idea is to have multiple sites fed from a single topic hierarchy and um, choose a top level term that is the, the um, entries for the, the menu, give a level of, um, of um, the depth for the menu because um, on the final page there is supposed to be drop down menu so you have all the menu levels uh, already in place and not just on the active path. So I needed to retrieve more menu levels here and I have to configure that somewhere and um, determine where to place these, uh, this menu. Um, so then actually um, the second thing is to associate um, con uh, topics or uh, panel pages to uh, taxonomy terms and here's the default for that and for each of the uh, taxonomy terms, then you can override um, which page is bound to this particular term. So by this means, I have a single um, taxonomy or a single um, panel page that does the default display for a site. And then for each of these terms, I can um, set a different panel page um, for, um, for displaying this particular term in the hierarchy. And the net result is that, um, well, this module uh, automatically, just as taxonomy menu did it, um, create the uh, menu hierarchy Where is it? Mm, for from based, based on this taxonomy um, hierarchy. So here we go. So this is the navigation menu and um, primary links, that is where the uh, navigation got, got placed. Um, from this level on downwards. Um, and then you can do whatever you want with, with placing this menu. Um, here is just uh, placed in the primary links menu. And um, well, on my default or on my little theme here, it's uh, I got the, the primary links and I have the second links arbitrarily placed here. Um, so this is the way it does. So this page looks a bit ugly because um, it's managed by the um, panel and I haven't shown you how, how this module actually does panel management. Um, so this is a, a single panel here, there's another one here on the left, there's another one here on the right, there's some uh, standard blocks here on the right and this is all the middle piece, the, the normal content area is managed by the panel module and I just show you um, how this particular panel page is, is set up. Uh, oh, they disappeared. Strange. Ah, there. So this is the way the panel module allows you to configure your um, panel pages. Um, you have some general settings. You can choose. Um, a layout. There is a some there are some layout options already um, delivered with this module, and you can very easily add your own layout options. Um, put a little um, little snapshot here of your layout, and then it's it's added here um, just as well. So this is the the place to put your custom layouts um, in this place, and th then you choose of these. And uh, once you've chosen one, you go to the content area, and then you have this very um, nice interface for actually moving around content on your um, final site. And then 
So the, you have these panels, you have um, content in here, multiple ones in each of these panels um, get parameterized from, from the content just <laughs> as you would in, in view par parameterization, difficult word. Um, so you have all the flexibility of, of having views with all their options. You can um, still use the, um, the URL to control which view and which content um, gets displayed. And um, yeah, this way you can have very flexible layout um, and even, oops, <laughs> and even have that go away, and even have that controllable controllable by editors. There's, yeah, I just briefly give you an idea why I, I mentioned these other two modules, which may or may not be uh, a good thing to install when you have deep topical uh, hierarchies. Um, there's this. Um, taxonomy batch operations module, which gives you a very easy way to um, manipulate the weights of, of terms in a hierarchy by, um, by promoting the weight field um, orange to this listing, so you don't have to enter all these um, terms individually. And you can have, you can add multiple terms, so that makes it a bit easier to um, enter deep hierarchy, uh, hierarchies in, in uh, this field. Then there is a little other thing, some jQuery magic, I really got in love with jQuery um, recently. And um, there's a little widget we, we implemented for entering the, um, the terms, the deep hierarchy. When you have multiple selects, it, it, it gets a bit uh, difficult to enter here. And uh, the editor team got used to just clicking the various topics that they had. And we sort of em emulated that by um, you're just manipulating the um, the form entry. Oh, this font is too big. The form entry that um, um, that made this that that showed the taxonomy terms by by adding a little bit of jQuery magic here. Um, so this is all possible by um, overwriting um, yeah, just form um, forms in in your code. So the idea here again is to have multiple sides and be able to choose from, from either topics here. So this is, underneath is just a plain old taxonomy um, term um, tree that used to give you just an, uh, a select box um, with hundreds of terms and this way it's a bit easier to, to navigate it. Um, is that now? It's going to be, <laughs> definitely. Um, Do you have a name for it already? Uh, no, I, well <laughs> this one is, no, it doesn't have a name yet, no. Um, so all these modules are, are um, definitely going to be available. The uh, taxonomy menu um, term association thingy will 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 get placed somewhere, and this one is is a small thing, but I think it's very useful. And well, I'll post it somewhere in the next days. Um, all right. So um, when I get my cursor back, oh, there it is. Um, Ah, told you everything there already. So this is the two things that we had to revisit the uh, taxonomy menu, which is um, nice and works nicely when you have hierarchical URLs, but we wanted uh, single level URLs, which we can then uh, have an alias for, which is the ultimate goal of having URLs like um, sports slash football slash blah blah in, in the site. And this is only possible if you have a single level of URL that you can then have an alias for. Um, plus the, um, oh that's, that's this slide, sorry. Um, plus um, the way that this kind of URL makes it much more easy, to easy obviously to um, pass the um, ID as a parameter to the embedded views there. Um, the other thing that um, um, was needed was to um, got get rid of this standard list of, of uh, nodes in a term um, term page, but rather have the panel page um, display um, display the, the views, and then the embedded views actually take care of selecting the the content. And um, this needed there was some coding needed, so. Um, um, but I'll post this as a module and, um, well, Drupal 
as a conclusion, Drupal is definitely um, worth looking at when you have complex layouts, but um, um, as opposed to some marketing information you may have gotten somewhere, um, at some point it, it really needs some coding, and I think it will be the case in, uh, in Drupal 6 as well. Um, but the module is not very complex. It just took uh, two or three iterations to uh, sort of um, get it to that level um, and, and find the right uh, hooks. And this is always the uh, sort of the thing where you do everything yourself or have a very low level system or have something like Drupal which gives you so much more flexibility and, and functionality but you have to sort of dive a bit more down and actually find the places to add. Um, I'm not sure if this is the ultimate way of doing hierarchical sites with Drupal and having flexible layouts, but at least I think it's, it's a way to do it. And um, I'm very much looking forward to, to port this to Drupal 6. And um, yeah, and with that maybe that's really a competition to Typo 3 or something, um, doing hierarchical sites with Drupal. So this is really everything I want to tell you about um, how to do these layout things. I hope it was not too boring in the initial sections. Um, but I think the, the ultimate way of doing that um, is, well, have a look at, um, at these modules. I think they are worth um, looking at. Questions? All right. Yeah. I haven't done any benchmarking yet. We, well, we used, I must confess, we used uh, PHP, uh, PHP Tal in a um, different project with a different content management system, and um, six CMS that was. And um, there it was, well, the flexibility you gain by having the designers being able to uh, place their example content and the, uh, the cleanliness of, of the templates that you gain is, was, I think, much worth the effort um, for middle-scale pages. I haven't um, done awfully big pages and haven't done any benchmarking yet, but, uh, well, I, it's at least not, it's not no noticeable on, on the small to medium sites. And that was uh, sputnik.de. So it's a um, well, it's it's a rather popular site. I don't know what how many page impressions I have. So, but it's it's a rather popular site, and and it was not noticeable there. So I guess uh, it's well worth trying it. All right then. So I think we are through. <laughs> Thank you. Website, you need a system to manage your content through. If you want to build a web application, you gotta download Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal,